It's June 22, 2009. Afternoon rush hour is in full swing as people make their way home. Little do they know is some people would never reach their final destinations. At around 4.50 p.m. on the Washington Metro Area Transit Authority Red Line, train 214 is making its way to Shady Grove with Breda 3000 series cars 3036, 3037, 3257, 3256, and CAF 5000 series cars 5067 and 5066. At 4.57 p.m., Washington Metro train 112 left the Tacoma station following 214 with Roar 1000 series cars 1079, 1078, 1071, 1070, 1130, and 1131. The cars are equipped with onboard systems called automatic train operation and automatic train control, which allows for autonomous train operation with little human intervention. It uses track circuits to determine which sections of track trains are occupying it. However, there's a problem with the circuit that nobody knows. Train 214 suddenly comes to a stop between Tacoma and Fort Totten, but 112, however, is still traveling behind at 55 miles an hour until it rounds a blind curve and disaster struck. <laughs> There is late word tonight on what has been a deadly metro train crash in Washington, D.C. Emergency crews are on the scene of what's being described as a mass casualty event. Officials say a six-car train crashed into another near the Washington-Maryland border. It happened during the height of Monday evening. Uh, that death toll did rise to nine overnight after search crews with cadaver dogs found three more bodies in the wreckage of the trains behind me. The second train, the first car, was just absolutely shredded second train or the second car the the seats were out the window it was, it was awful train 112 plows into the rear of 214 car 1079 telescoped over the rear car of the stationary train trapping many passengers who required rescue by emergency workers using ladders to access such telescoping hadn't been a thing on railroads since the early 20th century in the era of wooden coaches and steam locomotives nearly 90 years prior. Dennis Augsbley and Martin Griffith, two United States Army soldiers who were in the lead train and were uninjured from the collision, helped passengers, most of whom appeared to have minor injuries, evacuate from the train. The two then noticed that six to eight people from the other train had been ejected by the force of the collision and were more seriously injured. One person from the overtaking train had been thrown onto the roof of the stationary train and suffered a severe head wound. The soldiers gave first aid to more of the seriously injured people until help arrived and informed responding emergency personnel that the rails were still powered by their third rail and needed to be shut off. Immediately following the collision, firefighters and paramedics from the District of Columbia Fire and Emergency Medical Services were dispatched to the scene and arrived at the location of the collision soon after. DC Fire Chief Dennis Rubin stated that the initial 911 calls made the incident seem rather small, like a light tap of a collision, but after firefighters arrived on the scene, they were overwhelmed by a scene of destruction. Within two hours, more than 200 firefighters were on scene in response to the three alarm incident. Rescuers worked throughout the night using cranes and heavy rescue equipment to free trapped passengers and search for bodies. Nine people lost their lives, including the operator of train 112, and approximately 80 more suffered varying degrees of injuries. An NTSB investigation found out that the ATC track circuit on the section of the track had gone faulty and would not register the location of trains accurately. You see, after a June 17th replacement of the track circuit component, the track circuit had been suffering from parasitic oscillations, which is an undesirable repeating of cylindrical variation in voltage or current in electrical circuit, resulting in a periodic waveform. 
It is often caused by feedback in an amplifying device. The problem usually occurs notably in RF, audio, and other electronic amplifiers as well as in digital signal processing. This left the track circuit unable to reliably report when, the track, when a certain stretch of track was occupied by another train. The struck train came to a stop because of traffic ahead, and because the entire train was within the faulty circuit, it became virtually invisible to the automatic train control system. The train behind it was therefore commanded to proceed to 55 miles an hour. The operator of the striking train applied the emergency brakes after the stopped train came into full view, but there was little to no time in order to prevent the collision. A series of near misses in 2005 with similar circumstances in the tunnel between Foggy Bottom and Roslyn stations led to a new test procedure which would have identified the faulty, faulty circuit. However, by 2009, Metro engineers were unaware of this incident or the tests developed to detect the failure. It was a warning of things to come that was never acknowledged. The NTSB also found that the operator's decision to operate 214 in manual mode during the evening rush period was in violation of Metro Rail rules. But then again, the track circuit was failing to detect trains anyway, regardless of whether they were operating in manual or automatic mode. The NTSB then recommended WMTA to establish periodic inspection and maintenance procedures to examine all audio frequency track circuit modules within the Metro Rail system to identify and remove from service any modules that exhibit pulse type parasitic oscillation that could be faulty. In the end, cars 1078, 5066, and 5067 were retired after the collision and used as a source of spare parts until the retirement of the 5000 series rail cars in 2018, where they were eventually scrapped. WMATA announced the policy of no longer placing 1000 series trains at the end of train concepts to prevent telescoping the event of the collision they were the weakest of our structure. All 1,000 series cars were put in the middle of train sets and served for another eight years until the retirement of 2017. More than 10 years have passed since the crash, and hopefully safety oversights like this one that caused this accident don't ever happen in the future.